number 121. This yeah. is number 121. Let's uh let's get rocking here. Super cool. Thanks everybody for coming. I like this, I love this topic. We actually kind of formulated our entire boot camp based on this topic. Jay, I didn't I didn't even tell you that. Yeah. Last no, week no, yeah, we put yeah, this together. Good. It was like we want you to leave with five ways that you can raise more money immediately, you know, at your next event, right away, in your planning. Um, and that's what we did an entire boot camp in April about, as a matter of fact. So that was really cool. So this is going to be a condensed version, obviously, uh, a little less than an hour. We want to be respectful of your time. We'll have you out of here uh, by what one central, uh, wherever you're located. Quick math because I'm on the West Coast. But um, uh, Q&A function at the bottom. You can ask questions anonymously there. You can chat with everybody uh, mm -hmm. over here in the chat feature. Uh, I'm Trevor Nelson, Jason Ledlow, my, my partner, my brother. And uh, we're here to talk about five ways that you can raise more, more money at your next event. These are things that you probably have heard before. We're going to give you our take you on it. You may be doing them. Yeah, you may you be doing them. You already be doing them to great success. I actually think that there's ways with all of these options that we can twist the dial, frankly, and maybe we can give you some nuggets. Um, Jay, you wanted to start in a particular way. Yeah, so well. something we've, we've talked about this, and, and it's been something we wanted to add to our format for this, yeah. this week, webinar we do every week, because we get a lot of questions and a lot of things that come, and, and we've talked about it, but we just haven't had the point to do it, and we're calling an audible today, because... We had somebody who reached out and uh, very, very thankful uh, for that. Ask yeah. us a question. And, was Elaine correct? Was it uh, not? Yeah, yeah, Elaine Stevens. So Thank Elaine's you, here. Elaine. Thank you, very Elaine. Cool. And so what we're going to do is this is we want to do something where we're going to just you know it's a, it's an open Q and A. It's our deal. We'll pull one to two questions. We got one from Elaine, and we get these throughout the week. And what we thought is instead of maybe doing it, we would ask if we could just share it on this, because I think there's a lot of feedback that you guys can give that mm -hmm. whether somebody's here now listening to or on the recording, yeah. um, if you're listening to it on you know YouTube or one of the recordings, totally. that um, you, there are a lot of stuff to come out of. So here's today's question. We're going to start off yeah. every week when we do this, we're going to start off with a question to do that, and then we'll jump into the topic. And cool. so awesome, awesome. here's the deal. Um, so Elaine reached out and said, Jason, we're a small local museum. Um, and... Um, She's asking, how do we reach uh, people over the age of 50? Mm -hmm. She said, you know, we, we ne they never see our newsletters. And their emails, uh, because their email is a mess or they don't use it often, you yeah. know, they don't look at social media. So they're really trying to get that crowd over 50. Um, uh, Which is you know, common, actually. That's not very off the beaten. You're not an outlier, Elaine. You know what no, I mean? No, no. And I've got, there, there's some things. Now, one thing I do want to mention, and I, I do want to ask this question, Elaine, and since you're here, you can just do this in the in the comments. Um, just to clarify, you're specifically looking for, to get the the people that are 50 and over to be for donations, to reach out, to seek them, to connect with them, to support your organization. Is that correct, Elaine? Am I, am I getting that right? You can answer in the chat, Elaine, or raise your hand, whatever you like. So um, while she's doing that, uh, anybody that has any feedback or thought about trying to get that, uh, well, that demographic, with yeah, I understand that demographic, but, but the experience? reason that you're trying yeah. to reach them, the reason you're reaching out for that demographic, because these are potential donors, is that correct? Oh, my camera just went off. Okay. Okay, good. Okay. So we're soliciting donors. Okay. I got a whole lot of stuff to give you in a very short period of time. We're going to put a clock on this and, you know, just not on the screen, but we don't, we want to, to do this. But if anybody has any feedback on success that you've had reaching that demographic 50 and over, um, because I, I'm going to just tell you one, I'm in that group. I'm in the 50 and over. Um, I do have a couple of email addresses. I do have some stuff, but my feedback to you is one, sometimes we need to go back and look at the message that we're sending because even though we have an idea, we think that, well, they're not reading it. They don't look at email. They're not very sophisticated, all these things. That's actually sometimes in today's time, we're seeing that that's not quite correct. We've had some of that same, those same conversations and worked with this. People that are my age and older, okay, I'm, I'm a little past 50. Uh, hit the big 55 this year, so... I'm close too, you know, by the way. We're 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 too. in we're we're there. We I, I use email on a daily basis, but yep. here's one of the things that we found, and, and we do this because we send out a lot of stuff. Okay, we and we try not to send too much out, but we do emails on a daily basis. 
that subject line has more to do with what you're going to be seen or how it's going to be seen and filtered out more than anything you can possibly imagine. Agreed. We test this on a weekly basis. We do a B testing. Some of you guys are going to get our stuff. Uh, you're on the mailing list and you, some of you may get one or the other because we we're looking to see how people are opening email, how mm -hmm. they're seeing it, how we're getting their attention. What is going to pull, you know, what are going to be the key words? And so Absolutely. before, you know, we just say do a blank and we throw out social media and all that stuff and, and to do that. The second thing I'm going to say, social media is not a way to go get donors. I would never advocate somebody using a social media. I campaign. think it's a way to tell a story, right? It's a way. It's a great way to, to share your mission. Yeah. It gives you presence. Yeah. It gives you information. Attention. Attention. But, but to do yeah. that. And so then I'm going to come back to this. Raising money's hard. Everybody here that's heard us do it, you know, you've never heard me say, oh, well, that's easy. It's not. It's hard. Totally. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and I, I'm going to mention and one more works. thing. We used to use constant contact. We mm. switched. We changed mm. from constant contact. We use Insightly now. That's just because we have a full CRM suite with them. Mm -hmm. We got so many people responding that we had never gotten before. They were, they were, constant and i don't know what it is i'm not here to dog their deal maybe it's some mm -hmm. setting that was internal that we used but i know that when we switched our pen our open rate went up dramatically people that we'd been emailing for a couple of years all of a sudden Remarkable. started getting our email um we, you know, we use something called insightly. it's called yeah. insightly but it's a full crm suite there are other ways to send these emails but let me tell you how you can make a test and find out what's going on yep before you go spend a bunch of money, before you go get all this stuff and, and, you know, go crazy. I would recommend simply sending out and e some emails from mm -hmm. your email. Make mm -hmm. it really simple. You mm -hmm. can BCC everybody on there. So that way you're not sharing people's email address and you just say, Hey everybody, I just wanted to reach out and say hi and just give you an update on what's going on or something. If you've got that, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, because testing. if you've got there, if you've got an email address, then you've got some kind of relationship with them. And I think it's very, very uh, fine to do that. Gmail emails, Yahoo emails are really bad at getting blocked. I'm just going to tell you it, it is. It's something we fight with on a, on a weekly basis. And I say fight with, we just have to manage it. Um, we've had customers who have reached out, donors who have said, you know, I didn't get it, went to spam. And we have a, we've got every bit of sophistication and yeah. email that you could possibly get. I'm talking about just sending out emails to direct emails, not, you know, through a, totally. a mass not marketing. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's something that you've got to really think about. Then the final thing that I'm going to say is how to reach people that are, you know, 50 and over. Yeah. Pick up the phone. The, the most, most powerful, powerful fundraising tool, tool yeah. is right here. And the reason I say that is when you pick up the phone and you call someone, um, and you, even if you leave a message and then you follow up with a, with an email or something like that, it is so much more powerful when it comes to raising money. Mm -hmm. I've been doing this for a long time. And I promise you all, if there was some magic recipe that we could send out a mass email and raise money, we could do it. We would be, we would <laughs> give it away. It. We would literally yeah. be giving it to you guys to use because, but there's just not. There's not some magic. No, there's know, not a panacea um, for this. You know, and, yeah. and I'm going to bounce right back and I'm going to wrap it up. I hope this is helpful to you, Elaine, and, and happy to have a, uh, a happy to have a um, uh, coaching call with you if you'd like yep. to. It's no chart, you know, free like yep. we do. But the last thing I was going to say, let me tell you something about social media. I think a lot of people misunderstand. Organizations, ours being one, that do incorporate social media into what we do mm -hmm. you have to put a lot of content out 100%. a lot and you're you can't put out a post a, a week one post a month or something like that on facebook yeah. and expect to get anything back it will not yep. work yep you have to do multiple on a daily basis and they have to be different yeah see here's the thing we all think well we can go out here and put a we'll post it on facebook and everybody's going to show up yeah 15 years ago that probably worked and that totally. doesn't now there's so yeah. much content coming in you have about three tenths of a second to get that attention so it's really frustrating i know to do that but i'm just saying that's just kind of what it comes back to 100 so, percent. okay can i do something uh, in 90 seconds please. or less yes. oh yeah I mean, absolutely in bro. 90 Sorry. seconds or less everybody 
Um, Jason talked about uh, what three different things, social, email, telephone, right? And I, I'm a big believer in everything that he just said, obviously, because you know we, this is what we do lockstep daily. Um, we're looking to enter, if you're looking for attention and to get that attention to get folks in, excited about your mission and get them involved, um, we're talking about, I call it interrupting the loop. And the reason why I call it interrupting the loop is because there's so much, it doesn't matter how old you are, everyone's on the phone, everyone knows how to use it. 80 year old people, I'm just using that just, just loosely. Yeah, we do all the time. Are, so. are involved with mobile bidding software and whatnot and know how to check in and know how to check out. And we've been conditioned to use these phones despite the fact that, as Jason mentioned, the, the most powerful fundraising tool that you have, but you're looking to interrupt the loop. So that means playing with subject lines in the emails, absolutely testing. I shouldn't say playing, but testing those subject lines, making them personal, having a catchphrase, this, that, and the other thing. Um, with social media, uh, as Jason mentioned, multiple, multiple posts, constantly testing all the time. Absolutely perfect. You need to do that. Um, as much as humanly possible to tell your story. That's what it's a free platform. These are all free platforms um, to tell your story. And then, and then once again, as Jason mentioned, picking up the phone and having a conversation with folks definitely interrupts the loop, especially if it's not a spam call, right? So you're interrupting the loop, so mm -hmm. to speak, when you're picking up the phone and having a heartfelt conversation with someone that you want to get involved in supporting the mission. So um, I just, I'm a big believer in interrupting the loop. I was a big believer in that in 2006 when I first got into business, I suppose. I'm a big believer in that now still. It's obviously changed quite a bit with the advent of the phones and how much information is coming to folks regardless of age uh, on a daily basis. So I hope that helps. Um, you know, I think just to, just to hit one more thing that you just said, Trevor, I think is so uh, uh, critical. Testing. You send out if you're if you've got a list of 500 emails, send out 250 with one subject line, and use a different subject line, you know, subject for the yeah. other one. I think we found it what seven words or less in your subject line is is pretty. We like seven or less. Yep, seven or less right. is what we came yep. up with. Absolutely. And then I think Becky's deal of using Chat GPT, I if love you don't it. know, it's artificial it. intelligence yeah. that's free. Yeah. You can just sign in and use it. Um, that's why this is such a great resource. If yeah. Elaine Forgive me if this is your first time on the webinar, or if not, apologies. Um, but if if this is your first time, or when, you know if you've come a, a few times, or or every time, this is such a great forum to get feedback from some of the best, most prolific fundraisers that we know in our network. And that's the idea that Jason mentioned with you know sharing these questions and getting some answers, not from us because we're just sharing information. We've got real, you know professionals that are fundraising every day on as guests with us. So yeah, I think that's awesome. Thanks for the feedback, Becky. And any other feedback from anyone else that's ever faced the same issue, please let us know. Please help. Okay. Um, we're going to rock on and get on with uh, with the next part because we've spent uh, 20 minutes. So we want to get to this. Awesome. Um, and uh, let's get going. Okay. <laughs> so please do. Please do. All right. I'm, 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 I'm laughing because my camera says it, it's too hot. So. Yeah. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Five ways to raise more money. So this is uh, pretty good stuff and uh, we'll just get right cracking with it. So you want to just take the first one there, bro? And Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's the one that you've taught me more about um, over recent years. And a lot of folks that I know that are watching right now do great to great success. It's sponsorships and underwriting. So it's kind of like, we're, we're starting to title this, I was talking to Matt from our team, outside event fundraising, outside mm -hmm. of the actual event. Um, sponsorships and underwriting, something that, Jason, correct me if I'm wrong, we, we say tackle this first. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, outside of the event, pre-event fundraising, getting X amount of dollars committed um, before the event even takes place uh, would be lovely. The advent of this and the big push from this actually happened during COVID tremendously because folks weren't gathering, um, in such great numbers for obvious reasons. Um, so we saw a giant push, uh, for pre-event fundraising, outside event fundraising with sponsorships and underwriting. And then we're big believers in being creative with this. So we talk about it probably every week. Hey, well, 90% of the time when we do coaching calls, I, I will tell you, we start 90% here. of the time we do, it's not yeah. talking about live auction items or software or anything else. Yeah. It's talking about pre-event fundraising. 100%. Literally. Yep. 100%. Yeah. I don't want to call it low hanging fruit, but if you haven't well, really, it's, it's the, the critical dial, part. 
A hundred percent. And and I'll just tell you, I, I want to just make a comment right here. We're in the trip business. So what we do, we sell trips and experiences that you used to, you know, you guys use in your nonprofit, in your events to raise more money. That's what we do. Well, guess what? If there's not the right people in the room, it doesn't matter. If yep. you can't hit your numbers, we can have, you. we could put all the stuff in the world out there, but that's where you're going to raise your money. And, you know, Trevor knows this. We, we used to say 50% pre-event fundraising. That was the number you had to raise. If you want to raise a hundred thousand, you need 50,000 bucks walking in the door. We're about, we're 70,000 now. We, we want you to get 70% and have that as a strong goal because then you can start making predictions about what's going to happen in your event. And when I say predictions, I mean pretty darn good where you really can say, okay, we, we've got 100,000. We've raised 70 with sponsorships, underwriting. We've got all that done. And so let me give you an example of while, while, we're, uh, while Trevor's getting his camera set up. And uh, there he's back. So let me, let me give you an example of that. So let's just say we've got $70,000 and we want to talk about our sponsorship levels. The number one thing that we're seeing across the board is when people are asking for more money, they're receiving they're more money. Yep. When they're not asking, they're not receiving. Yeah. So the very first thing I would tell, I would invite you to do is raise your top sponsorship. Ask level. for more. Yep. If it's 25,000, make it 50. If it's 50, make it a hundred. And I know that you sit there and go, Whoa, wait, wait a minute. Hold on a minute. Yeah. You know, you're talking going, we, we, we've raised, you know, $50,000 and we've had that. Well, how many times have you had it? How long have you had it? And, you know, if you're doing that, there's more money out there. There's inflation. You need to raise more money. And the top, I had breakfast with a, one of my best friends today, um, uh, other than Trevor. Um, we had, uh, um, we were talking about it. And, you know, the, the deal is the top 1% are loaded right now. They have 100%. a lot of money. They have a lot of excess capital Folks that have resources and they're, spend, and they're willing to spend it. resources, so, you know, and, and they're tip, if they're generous. They've got a lot of money to be generous with. So now's the time Agreed. to do it Agreed. and, and to not be afraid of that. And don't be, I say creative. I'm using that term loosely. What I'm saying, don't be bashful. Heck be aggressive. Mm-hmm. And Jason else, you know, we're, we're always talking to folks about ask for more. Hey, listen, you can always end up getting what you got before. Just ask for more. You yeah, because if you don't ask, you don't ask for it. You know what I mean? It's okay. I, I and if somebody doubt. here has ever, ever ever had somebody just said you asked for twenty five thousand, they gave you fifty. No, let me know. I, I would happen. like to have that example because I've never found one. That's not how it works. Have, not one. Yeah, that's not how it works. So, so yeah, we're mm-hmm. saying be creative, um, which is a, a I guess a, a, a nice, a soft, a soft a mm-hmm. spoken term for be aggressive and ask for well, more. Um, and, because you deserve it. Your mission deserves and it. And not just at the top, but also sure. at the bottom. Absolutely. And so because yeah. let's be, let's be, you know, I, I want to just say this and I'm going to try to say this. I'm, I'm not going to be sensitive. Sorry. That's, this is we don't want poor thing. people coming to our events if we're going to raise money. Sure. That's not who we're trying to get there. Yeah. And so if, if, and, and I had this, this conversation with somebody the other day and we've got a follow up uh, here in a couple of weeks, we'll see how they did. And they were selling tables for 650 bucks. I bet it would cost more to, to all of them. To, yeah. I said, well, what's your, what's your top table? 650. What's your cheapest table? 650. I said, well, what's it cost you to feed, put, put everybody out there? It was like 500 bucks. So they're making 150 bucks a table. Holy smokes. I'm like, oh my gosh. Oh, I mean, yeah. made, made my heart hurt. Yeah. We're in pain. So, you. you know, let's, let's, we, we need to raise money because yeah. people that have the, the money to give don't go to cheap events. Totally. I'm not saying that's uh, there are exceptions to this. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Yep. But if we want to attract those don't those type of donors that have significant capacity to give that where they will be number, you know, it still goes back to the mission. Don't misunderstand where we're going. But you've got to have you've got to be raising money. You've got to have your tables up there. Um, here's a great example. I'm, I'm going to tell you this is uh, I'm going to use Becky here as an example. The underwriting stuff you should underwrite everything yep underwrite everything if it's nailed down if it costs you money if it doesn't cost you money and what made me think about that is table well if it costs you 500 bucks you need to be selling that for at least minimum of 1500 i agree you need to be at least making you know 200 percent on it yeah because that's what we're here to do is to raise money and it breaks my it just it makes gives me pains in my chest uh literally i think i'm gonna have you know i'm gonna have to go to the doctor sometimes because I just, um, I see this, that we're, we're not reaching out. You're better off to have 50, you know, 25 tables 
at 2,500, this is the for sure deal, than having 50 tables at 500 or 1,000. It's not about how many people we get in the door. The it's right about people. how much money we raise. Yes. See, it's yes. about math. It's a, it's yes. a simple thing. So, Agreed. you know, doing these things, and, and the reason I'm, I mentioned Becky, because one of the things that don't give, every, you don't have to give everything away either. You mm-hmm. know, I love what Becky does with her event. She just, re- she told us this here a couple of weeks ago. If somebody underwrites something, they don't get tickets. You still have to go buy a table. You still yes. have to buy tickets and do that to yes. attend. Yes. And, um, I, you know, now everything's negotiable, obviously, if 100%. you're trying to get somebody big in there. But those two things are the ways that you raise money. And then tie it. Then, then final thing I would share is tie it to your mission. If it costs $1,000 to send a kid to camp, make sure everything is, you you quantify that every time that you're doing that. Every time you ask or every time you offer. It costs $5,000 to send a kid, to, or it takes $1,000 to send a kid to camp. You know, yep. when you buy a $5,000 table, you're underwriting five kids. There you go. I mean, you know, and you don't have to get down to the net dollars. You can round it up and it's okay. Because what we're looking at is trying to give people perception. Yep. Good. Yeah, good, Becky. Sponsors are not guaranteed comp tickets. Why give it away for free when they'll pay to attend? Yeah. Pay, if I mean, they, they will. if they they're not conditioned to get it for free unless they've gotten it for free. So well, don't start any bad habits, right? You know? Yeah. 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 So and as um, Becky mentioned, I think being flexible, nego it's not, you know, we're not saying purposely get into a negotiation with everyone, but everything is negotiable. If you offer the title sponsor for 50 and someone says, I'll meet you at 40, absolutely you can negotiate that. We're also big believers in getting two uh, title sponsors at 25,000 each to hit that $50,000 figure. Once again, you make the rules because you're the one raising money for your organization, right? Yeah. So that's what I think. Did I get well, and, and don't make it about, the, the final thing I would say is yeah. do not make it about what they're getting. Make mm-hmm. it about what they're giving. Yes. Once you make it about a tra- negotiation, about transaction, about what they receive for the dollars they get, they don't, they donate, then, then exactly it becomes it about that. Yep. Make it's everything about the impact of what their donation is going to do. Yep. yep. If it's 50,000, it's 50 kids are going to be able to go to camp. 100%. That's what you want to do and make it for your organization. Okay. Big, it doesn't have, it doesn't mean you're making a restricted gift. Yeah. It just, we're trying to give context for what the power of that donation does. Um, Apples and oranges in this world is transaction and relational. And of course, you want them to have a relationship with your organization, right? We don't want the op. The antithesis of that is a transaction. So uh, create a relationship with the organization by helping, by giving. That's this, Let's condition folks from that point forward. So any questions stuff. on this, guys, just shout it out. Yeah. Know, put it in the chat. There's a Q&A is open. I was, uh, I was worried that we weren't forward. giving enough examples of underwriting. Does that make sense, though? If it's, you know, you can underwrite the bar, the audiovisual, the bathrooms, the, the, some auction items, the software. You can underwrite the auctioneer. So many different options. You can underwrite the stage. We, we had somebody underwrite the stage. It didn't cost them any money. It was a wooden stage built outside. They still yeah, they still it. sold it. You know, they put it out there and sold it. And the reason yeah. they did is because it just gave people a chance to go deeper into their organization for giving. Yes. Because yes. if Trevor and I sit at the same table every year, yep. I don't want to buy another. I don't want to buy a table. I don't because yeah. I'm going to go with Trevor and Shelby. Give me some options. I don't want to buy a table because then I've got to go find all the stuff. But... I believe in the mission and you come to me and say, Hey, Jason, I know you come, I know you sit with Trevor and Shelby every year, Yeah, but we'd love to see if you'd like to help us maybe underwrite something. And here's a yeah, list. We've got this really creative new. And approach. I go, and I yeah. see it and I, I go, okay, yeah, let me, let me do the, I want to do the VIP party. Holy cow. That's $6,000. Yeah. I'd like to do that. I think that'd be fun. Boom. All those kind of things happen. And, but we have to ask and give people opportunities. So Agreed. enough of that. Love it. Um, let's, love it. let's go to number two, uh, raffles and drawings. Yep. Big believer. Hey, this can no, be well, under- there's just, there's just yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just going to say there is not one thing that you can do, not one single thing that you can do that return more dollars for the opportunity than this right here. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. We call it a golden ticket. Um, I'll just use our, you know, example, yeah. for instance, we, pro- we provide a tripper experience, a choice of four different destinations. For instance, one of the products where we we, we structure to where you sell a hundred tickets for a hundred dollars. Um, and you raise 10,000 and you can sell these tickets pre-event. You can outside of the event, you can sell them during the event. You can sell them online to folks that aren't even attending the event. Um, 
we're also very big believers. And when you have, I love this example, Jay, and you know, forgive us if you've already heard it, but having really cool donated items that might not bring $10,000 in your live auction because you just don't have that kind of, you know, capacity in the room, so to speak, with the resources. You know, we use the uh, George Strait tickets, you know, and the late, and you mentioned the lady, you know, what's the most you've ever sold anything for uh, in the live? And she said $5,000. And you said, well, let's use the George Strait tickets as a golden ticket and sell 100 tickets for $100. They're donated and you're going to raise $10,000, you know? So as mentioned, yeah, twisting the dial on that, the most impactful, as you mentioned, quickest well, way that you can raise a ton of money. And you can raise, you can have more than one. One we're big we, believers in that. We, we're, we we're very now, bullish. Yeah. I, I, well, I mean, here's the deal. Everybody can do it. Something yeah. else that we've learned is having um, a, what we call it. We call it a never ending raffle. And I know that doesn't make much sense. And we'll maybe put the link in here when we send this out, if you want to hear more about it. Love it. But it's where, you know, you let's just say that you, you continue to do it over and over and over again. You know, it's something that you can sell more than one. So you do the first one, it blows out and you sell it out in the first, you know, wow, it sold out in like the first hour. Let's do another one. People are asking about it. So you do another yeah. one, you do it for less. There's all kinds yeah. of ways to do that. But I just, you're able to make it gamify it, yeah. put it out there. And the last thing I was going to say, don't do it. Don't do a, a cheap raffle. If you're selling raffle tickets for less than $50, you are hurting your own, your fundraising ability. You just are. It, it just, I, there's no reason to yeah. do it. For, I'm I mean, going to piggyback on a, on a, on yeah. a, don't do this we're not big believers in 50 50 raffles either where you give. Money. Oh no, 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 no. Don't give that money away. Yeah. And if Show you have any questions about how you can structure something, as Jason mentioned, if you want to mm -hmm. talk about this or a good place, we offer our time for free. We can do a free coaching session with you and talk about, Hey, what's the best place for this and this and this. And of course we'd love to talk you out of doing a 50 50 raffle. If, if you give us your audience, um, well, but, here's the, here's the deal. You're just, you're giving money away that you don't need to there's, it's not I mean, think about it. If it's a $10,000 raffle and you can do something that's going to cost you a couple of grand and you can go get it underwritten because you can't underwrite a 50, 50 raffle. You can't, correct. you yeah. cannot underwrite or 50, you could, I guess, you know, get somebody, they're going to do it, but what are they going to do? I mean, there's, it, you can't get, there's no juice there, yep. but if you're underwriting or other raffle, um, we had a, a event where they did a ro Rolex and they sell, yeah. they sold. You know, great success. 10 tickets for a hundred and, and a wingspan, a double wingspan for 250 bucks. They raised about $25,000. They got somebody to donate the watch. They, they got a Rolex. It was donated. It was $10,000. And you know, it was awesome. So they've got this, this deal. They made all this money, but a 50, 50, you can't, it's just basically, and, and it's money. There's nothing exciting about winning money. I mean, I, I, I mean, there is, but it's not the same thing because nope. you know the more people put in the more eh, it's just it's just kind of a i don't know there's just We're not also, much excitement about it we also as men, as we mentioned at the onset talking about raffles and drawings we're big believers in having multiple options listen if anyone ever told you you can't have more more than one let's just i'm not going to say they're wrong but let's just have a conversation about it because you could be leaving some money on the table it's okay mm -hmm. to have a, a People have different appetites, especially nowadays. So doing a raffle with a Rolex, doing a raffle with an experience, doing a raffle with some other donated, you know, wine or experience, you know, at a brewery or what have you, having a myriad of options. We know a lot of organizations that utilize these theories to great success, have multiple price points. And have multiple, you know, obviously at that, at, in that case, you're having multiple options. Folks quantify yeah. their ability to win. If you only have, you know, we're big on supply and demand and using scarcity in these tools. So folks can quickly, it's not gambling necessarily in their mind, but that's the best way to explain it. It's like, I know what my odds are if I'm buying a ticket and there's only a hundred of them available. And I'm, I want, I want to increase my odds. I want to buy five, you know, or what well, have you. So and, having and the those thing, options. Yeah. And the other thing it does, it lets you celebrate a win. When you have a sure. finite amount of anything, you can celebrate the win. So if you have, a, you know, 100 tickets, and you get, ladies and gentlemen, we sold 100 tickets for $100 a piece. That's $10,000. That's going to send yes. 10 kids to camp. Massive. And, you, you know, you get up there and celebrate that, and everybody starts cheering. They, That's because a lot of everybody juice. wants to be on a winning team. Yep. They Absolutely. do. It's a fact. Yep. It is a fact. And they will give money into something that wins, money into success. So this is one of those great, feel good energy injecting 
uh, strategies that you can no inject question. into your setup and you go, cause you don't get up there and go, well, we're going to pull the ticket now. No, it's fine. Okay. It's number fun. eight, seven, one. And Jason's on the microphone yep. talking about this okay. right now. You can sell tickets from the microphone too, if there's yeah. any left over. And that's really exciting. You get everyone's attention, you know? So we had a deal the other night, Guy sold 53 tickets from, they, they were doing the it, but they just, you yeah. know, they didn't sell it from the microphone. He sold 53 tickets. They raised $10,000. Yep. You know, Oh, awesome. I'm sorry. That's not true. It was $250 tickets sold 53 from the microphone. They, they raised $25,000. They sold a hundred tickets for 250 a piece. Yep. And, and raised also, $25, we're saying yeah. be, be creative, be creative. Don't be afraid to offer a high price point raffle item. So mm -hmm. hope that helps. Yeah. Okay. We had a question. So here's, um, here's what we did. So let me, do, I'm going to uh, touch on Becky, uh, Barbara's deal. Excuse me real quick. Uh, Barbara, I'm going to, I'm going to do a real quick, you know, Hi, Barbara. um, we, we have a couple of products we invite you to take a look at. We think they're really good. Um, one costs, uh, two grand, 1995. The other one's 24. No, I'm sorry. Uh, 3995. Yep. And so it's ones, you know, you do the hundred dollar raffle raise 10,000. The other one do two fifty, raise 25,000. It's up to your event. But my point is, you know, we, I did a deal with jewelry one time. They had a deepest jewelry donated and we used that raised $8,500. Um, yeah. or 8,600, something like that. So all, and it wouldn't have brought that in a live auction. That's my, my whole point of that is, you know, it, all those things, people want some, a thing, you know, something that's exciting and that you can leverage because you've got more people that'll give a hundred or 250 for the chance of that. than maybe that they're going to give you a hundred bucks. It's, we know that for a fact we've done the yeah. study. So, um, the next one I want to talk about is a silent auction. It's real interesting that Barb said silent auction. She said, we've yeah. eliminated our silent auction this year. We're going to raffle experience packages. And that's cool. I don't mis misunderstand. Totally. Try but, out. Um, I, and I'm going to tell you, Barb, I, I don't mean to, 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 I'm going to say it poo poo on your parade a little bit. I'm not a fan of buying those. I think it's a, I think it's a something you can do because it's kind of fun, but I would be very, very cautious about, how much money I was trying to raise with that because it gets a little bit long. So here's what you can do. I'm going to give you a strategy. If you're going to, and what it is is where, um, and I, there's a name for it and I can't, it's, it's not catching me right now, but where you have six different things that, and you know, and you get to go stuff yep. the box, yep. which one you want. Yeah. So here's what I would do in that situation. I would give two options to buy tickets, not one, not two, not 10, but two. And it's either something like you get 10 tickets, for a hundred dollars and a double wingspan for 250, mm -hmm. something like that, or five tickets for a hundred and an arm length for 250. This is not about being fair. This is about raising money. We want to make sure that the amount of tickets that somebody gets for the higher amount, we just want them to get the higher amount of money. Okay. Doesn't matter, but make it so much more that it's just not fair. It's kind of like, well, it's one ticket for a hundred dollars or 25 tickets for 250. Yeah. Because you're wanting to raise more money. And what will happen is 95% yeah. will default to the higher amount because they're thinking that way. Just telling you. It's just So those are good if you do that strategy with the tickets, okay? You'll just sell a whole bunch more tickets that way. Cool. Uh, Thanks, Barbara. So, yeah, so we're not picking on you. Just so you know, you raise no, a lot of money. Yeah, I, I just was going to say, yeah. you know, I started to say what I was going to do. It works great if you do something like that because then people are like, yeah, and they walk around. And what you'll see is I'll have the double wingspan because people are walking around with the tickets yep. draped around their necks. Yep. You know, and, and then other people see it and they go, Where'd you get all those tickets? Oh man, it's the deal over there. They got it was, yeah, you know, 250 they bucks and you get all these. Out. It's they only like you know, five tickets for a hundred bucks, and I got, you know, I bought three of these. Yes. Um, and they the, stuff them all into one thing as they want to win. Yeah. So just telling you that's, yeah. that's a great strategy. You don't have to do the, but uh, that's why I like it. Cause everybody Psych sees the tickets and they, they start yeah. thinking that way and want to get theirs. Okay. Psychology dictates out. that missing out. Actually, people yeah. actually don't, they, they, they feel worse about missing out on an opportunity, especially when it comes to money they, they, more than anything else. Right. You know what I mean? It's the opportunity missed. So capitalize on that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And um, you'll get critical mass at your event. Okay. I want to hit silent auction really fast. Cool. Um, 
I, I want to talk about that. Barb said we're, very no, we're not going to do one. Bullish. I want to I want to invite you yes. to think about doing it, but I want to give you a couple things to do. This is doesn't matter. I don't care if you've been doing the same way. You've got a hundred items, seventy items. We're not going to dig into all the the minutia, but I want to share a couple things. Number one, have a starting bid and a buy it now price for every item. Do yep. not publish the value. Just take it off. Don't do it. Love it. There's no reason to. It is a, it, all you're doing is you, you make it transactional make at that point in time instead of yep. donating. Okay. Yep. Yep. So you put a starting bid and a buy it now and make the buy it now a crazy number. Seriously. If you've got a bunch of yeah. gift cards, and say, now, I've got $1,000 in. in gift cards that I'm putting down here. I've got $1,000 in gift cards. My starting bid's 500 bucks. It's $100 increments. And the buy it now is $2,000. Just, I mean, do something like that. If it's, it doesn't matter what it is. If it's a, a hair dryer, mm -hmm. you know, starting bids, 50 bucks, buy it now, it's 250. Just believe us when we say it, it's, it's a little gamesmanship, but it's not, you know, you're not telling anybody it's untrue. It's not value. That's not what it's worth. That's not, in fact, we don't even like buy it now. We like instant win. Yeah, we're big on that. You're instantly going to win psychology this. Psychology of winning. And yeah. it's a psychology. The second thing I want to tell you, and this is something we've, we've shared this the last couple of weeks, we have seen, we've got significant evidence, more than one, on multiple events where items in the silent auction are selling for more money than the live auction. Now, they're significant, they're, they're more valuable things, and they're typically trips and experiences because that's what we do, so we have that data. But guy. we're seeing things bring more money in the silent auction than what are selling for in the live auction, and that's never happened in my life. In We've 30 years it. of doing it, I've never seen yeah. that before. Yep. Yep. Pretty wild. To just, see. It's not one or two. It's, a, everybody it's happening that a lot. It, it's it's, it's awesome. They are following that that strategy that you just dictated, which is awesome. So it's mm -hmm. obviously working. Um, and another thing, though, it doesn't have to be our stuff, but it has to be things or experiences. It's experiences are typically better than consumer goods, it seems like, if I don't mind making that yeah. broad of a statement, Jay. But it has to be things that exp inspire people to bid. We're also massive, massive believers, whether it's a silent auction or live auction. And we'll kind of blend the two together right now, um, just for time, if that's cool. But it has to be something that you're advertising pre-event as well. Utilize the, the power of those experiences pre-event yeah. um, because it'll inspire attention and action and bidding. Right. So I had a conversation. I had a conversation. I told Trevor this yesterday. I had a conversation with uh, one of our clients. I had to go out and uh, to Memphis uh, this past Tuesday and meet with him. L very large national nonprofit. And he said, and one of the, the, the directors there we were visiting, he said, we advertise this. We started advertising stuff. We advertise this, this trip. He said, one of our, the, the donors showed up and she said, I'm buying that. And she yeah. called first said, that's good. That's mine. Yeah. She showed up and said, raise your hand until I tell you to put it down to one of the ringmen. Yeah. Literally how she bought it paid like eight, $9,000 for something. Advertise. And so because she was, she saw it beforehand. She saw it was going to be there and she went, she normally didn't go to the event. Mm -hmm. Okay. Her husband did. Cool she normally that. didn't. She went because she yeah. saw that yeah. and she wanted it. And so that is a yeah. really good way to have, to see these things happening and to see this stuff and, and silent auctions. I'm going to, I'm going to, give you something we don't do this a lot and everybody that's been here we don't talk about our stuff very much but a vacation station is a money maker okay 100%. and what it is it's our stuff people have been they can get on amazon have a whole pile of stuff tomorrow it takes a lot of time effort energy to get the stuff mm -hmm. collect it ask for it solicit it market set it up all that kind of stuff on little items but you set up some these posters they've got a qr code goes to a called HJ vacations where they can see a video and all the stuff on it. You put a starting bid where you make 25%. If only one person bids, you know, so the minute you so get a bid, you're in the money. If it's $4,000, the starting bids five grand. Okay. So you're making money no matter what. And then you put increments on there with an instant win price significantly up high. And oh, you, Calvin. you know, thank you, Calvin. Thanks, Calvin. Um, <laughs> Calvin's you, so he knows. And I don't know you're going to sell stuff. It's you're gonna, cool. and you're going to make money. <laughs> You'll make money with because what we're finding is maybe you don't put, you're sitting there going, well, you know, we don't know that enough people in our live auction would buy the Iceland trip, or, you know, we don't really know that we've got that many people that want to buy a Mykonos Villa. Sure. 
but you put it in there and if you know one two three people sit there and see it and they go yeah i want i want we we want to go yeah and it gives yeah. them permission to do something they were going to do anyway love and that. so yeah um paraphrasing from other conversations yeah. we've been having give folks the opportunity to bid on things that that are cool that they want they don't want stuff you know it's like yeah, oh they want to go places it's like, it's... it's like well give them stuff that they want um can the vacation absolutely stay? barbara absolutely yeah, i think so absolutely yeah. yeah for sure i think it can be substituted for a, a vacation station um oh cool. calvin. calvin calvin thanks for the feedback brother we, yeah listen. wish granted it's yours yeah. jason brings up a really really good point though about putting like an iceland trip has a high reserve it's an awesome trip and is reserved for only certain people, right? That have the resources to, to go on a trip like that and experience something like that. And that's fine. Doesn't make it better, doesn't make it worse. But that being said, it might not be the item because when we structure a live auction and work with a live auction with organizations, we want our live auction items to sell, you know, four, six, eight more times, right? Um, something you can't do with a donation item typically, right? In in an Iceland trip with a higher reserve might not hit that mark where we're selling it two, four, six, eight times. So that's why we put it in the silent. Now, expanding on that thought even further, there's going to be folks that we can assure you that are going to be interested in going to Iceland. It's just a very popular destination. Folks well, are there we right put now. it in, we have, it has goes, does go in. He's just using this for an example. So I don't want yeah. you to think he's talking about Iceland, but you want to put things that, that's going to fit your crowd, your 100%. group, group people. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, since we're kind of talking about live auction. And yeah, I, let's gonna, blend the two together. It's on your deal together. real quick, yeah, bro. For time. Let's yeah. just, for live auction, I'm going to tell you right now, everybody comes up with the same stuff. This is something we hear from coast to coast, literally coast to coast. Doesn't matter if it's a national nonprofit, committees, groups. We really want some more stuff that's domestic. Do you have any more stuff here in the U.S.? I'm going to tell you now without question with our stuff international trips dollar for dollar generate more money. more money than domestics by two to one are we saying don't I'm talking about not item items sold event? i'm not no. talking about items sold i'm saying profit profit yeah we're seeing stuff you know it's it's crazy we've got a villa for six people uh it's in it's in tuscany beautiful we've got we have multiple so i'm not saying one we've got several Beautiful, six people. It's forty five ninety five is what the reserve is. It is selling four, five, six times for anywhere from eight to ten to fifteen thousand mm -hmm. dollars. We sold it one group. They sold it ten times. Actually, it sold nine. One person backed out, but it sold nine times. They paid for it ten grand. And the reason I'm saying this is I'm using this because they didn't want to put it in there. They didn't. We have another dear friend of ours. She's going to be on next week. Um. We got her to put a villa in uh, uh, an event she had, uh, Amy with MDA. Yeah. And we said, Amy, just put it in, trust us. It sold four times. Yeah. And she didn't think she'd have, she was worried about sale once. It sold four times. But the point of it is international is where the money's at. Yeah. And I'm not talking about crazy, you know, stuff that's, that's, you know, where they got to fly 32 hours to get there. That's not what I'm talking about. Not Western Europe is really, I'm not Western a Europe night Bali is really where I'm talking trip. about because it's, you know, it's an eight, eight, 10 hour flight for most people. They can get there. They, they can go see it. It's something they want to do. And so I'm just telling you, it just makes money. And, and there's, and, and, and here's the thing for, now I'm not talking about our stuff. Now I'm just in general, there's four things people want when they go to live auction, they want a domestic destination. See, domestic does fit. They want an international destination. They want a once in a lifetime experience and they want to go to the beach. Those are four things that will hit. It doesn't work. matter where you're from. It does not matter. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if it's in Maine, Florida, Seattle, Southern California, or anywhere in between. Yeah. Those work every time. Yeah. The food groups. Yeah. The food groups. So, yeah. Well, and don't get an auction and just, and, you know, get an auctioneer that's good and that's hard and they're expensive, but just trust, trust us. We've seen the deal. So, um, yeah. All right. What else? Hey, I, I'd like to, I'd like to just talk about real quick, bro. If you don't mind, we've got just a few minutes left, uh, 10 minutes. Uh, any questions before we do that? Cause I wanted to talk about games. Yep. yep. So we have another revenue and fund a need. I'm sorry. Yeah. Fund a need and games. Yep. Yeah, cool. We'll blend those two together. Um, 
and you'll leave with more than five <laughs> things that you can use for fundraising. But um, uh, Elaine, thanks a ton. Happy to get you some info. Calvin, likewise, thank you so much. Um, I hope that helps. Yeah, Bob, I was good. That's thanks, that's Bever. I appreciate yeah. you sharing that. So they put they put the vacation station in. Had didn't think they'd sell anything, and they sold several items. So yeah. So um, don't let what's happened in the yeah. past, or don't let that curmudgeon on the committee dissuade you from having really fun experiences at the event because it's exactly what they are. And then for for goodness sakes, please advertise those experiences pre-event. Um, no one likes a surprise when it comes to Iceland. They don't, you know, I don't think a lot of folks, some folks are just going to be quick witted and there's, I'm going to go to Iceland. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, or quick to pull the trigger, so to speak. And, and what we mean by that is if you're using software, you can start sending those text messages yes, out to emails. Yes. If you're Video, not sending the, the emails night. out saying yeah. preview with a poster of what's going on yep. and you start sending this stuff out, you know, if you've got an experience, a special experience, let's just say that, you know, you've got somebody that, uh, you know, their sister-in-law is an astronaut and you go, you know, lunch with an astronaut, That's put awesome. that out there. So people Heck know, yeah. Heck yeah. Um, you know, if one of the cool things, and this is, you know, we'll, we'll deals was um, we had an event and there was a deal. It was to be a ball boy at, the University of Oklahoma is to yeah, be yeah. a ball boy for a game. Yep. My wife saw it before, followed it, talked about it, had was already planning, you know, doing that, and she bought it. And you know, we go to, we went to, used to go to a lot of events, and but that was the deal because she wanted to buy it for our son for his birthday, our youngest son. And um, so I'm just saying. It if even though I'm was doing the auction, she still because she saw it beforehand, it made a difference, and that was that it, it inspired her because she the more she thought about it, the more she liked it, and she bought it, yeah. and so that's going to happen with all of your folks. We're going to yeah. see this. The more you put this out there, they start seeing it, and they go, "Hey, you know what? They're they're researching they're researching yeah. airfare. They're they're looking at their calendar. They're talking to other folks." that might come to your event that want to bid on the same thing, especially if they know there's going to be more than one, you know, available, more than one item available. And then I like to say they're figuratively packing their bags before mm -hmm. the event. They're already packing their bags. Um, did I already say this today? I'm sorry, Jay. Folks are going to buy these items from Airbnb, Expedia, Booking.com, what have you. They're, they're already yeah, they're buy tra these travel. Items. The appetite for travel is enormous. We, we see want all them to buy it from you around the country, we and we, we, we buy get it, it real you. time. Yeah, and everybody that's doing it, it is astounding. I mean, it's, it's, the it's good for us. I mean, we're we're very yeah. we're very fortunate to be in what we do, but it's it's incredible the amount of money that's being raised, being paid for trips. Um, it's, it's incredible. So the appetite is enormous. right And, now. and this, yeah. it doesn't matter. It's small, little, simple events to great big monsters. Um, okay. Games and revenue enhancers. Cool. Um, I love games and, and revenue enhancers. They're fun. If there's certain, now there's certain ones I love and there's certain that I don't. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be, I'm going to show my bias. I loathe. Does anybody here do heads or tails? Does anybody Anybody I've do heads it. or tails? Yeah, I've seen it. Hats and chaps, whatever you want to call it. Let's be nice, I hate Jay. That Let's game. be nice. I hate everything about <laughs> it. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm hating on it. I hate, can't stand it. Drives me bat crap crazy. I just think it's long and slow and everything. But it serves a purpose. And games do that. Because, again, it allows people to participate that might not otherwise be able to maybe, you know, and that we want to be equal opportunity receivers. So people that maybe they couldn't, you know, they're not going to buy Iceland or any of the bit, you know, the $10,000 trips or a $2,500 trip. They're not, they don't have that kind of capacity or, you know, but what they do have is they have the ability to do some game stuff. And so that's where you can go. Now, so one thing that I'm very a big fan of, and I've, and I'll tell y'all 30 years, I had never done this. I've, I mean, I've been doing charity auctions for a long time. Yeah. I'd never done it. You know, my last champion, it was last champion Yeah, that's and a fun one. Uh, an organization. It was one of the last auctions I did. I'm, I'm retired now. I don't, I'm, I'm I retired. My hung my microphone up. Uh, one of the last auctions that I did, they had, it was a donation and it was, uh, I'm going to tell you, it was a, uh, uh, Yeti cooler. Mm. like a 12 pack of beer, a cup, a hat, 
a bottle opener, some koozies, stuff like that. Sounds like a good time. You know, and it was in the live auction. And I'm like, this is okay. So we're going to take something in the live, because in the live auction, that's where we got to raise some serious money. This is, we're trying to appeal to the top 1%, you know, and then we want to, you know, hit people all along the way down, like hitting vacation budgets and things like that. So, you know, I was like, okay. And I called a friend of mine, one of our friends here, who works with us, Mark West. And I said, Mark, how do I do last champion? Because Mark does it, has done it a bunch and raised really a ton of money it. with it. Yeah. That when it was all said and done, the last champion, we did that. It raised over eleven thousand dollars for a Yeti cooler. Pretty cool. A twelve pack of beer, a couple of hats, a bottle opener, and some koozies. That critical mass. So games and things like that don't underestimate them the ability for them to do it it all depends you know hats and chaps or whatever you call it heads and tails yeah Yeah. it takes a while there's some some do's and don'ts with it but people love it and they like to get up there and play with it okay they they enjoy it we're fun we're pro game we're pro interaction it's probably not going to raise as much very much money Mm -hmm. but if you do it right it'll raise the energy because people start cheering clapping having fun okay Yep. Um, things like last champion raises serious money. I mean, I know some guy, uh, Mark, uh, and Scotty, they had a, there was a rifle, a little, you know, $500 gun that was in a silent auction. They went and pulled that off. Said, Hey, we're going to pull this out of the silent and do it last champion. It brought $5,000. So yeah. serious money can be leveraged with doing that strategy. So I want to do that. Cool revenue the answer. last and final thing I want to hit on and cause we're, we're just on we we get three minutes left. Yep. Okay. Uh, and we're going to get, get draw a winner. The last one I want to mention is fund a need. Mm. You can start with your fund a need when you start sponsorships and underwriting to bring in people who are going to donate, people who can match, people who yep. can start doing that. That yep. needs to become part of your vernacular when somebody you're getting sponsorships. Fund a need, Elaine. Fund a need. Elaine, that um, means do me a favor, that's Elaine. a live ask, paddle yeah. raise, paddle drop, whatever they want to call it. It's where people yeah. just donate money. Okay. But what you want to do is you want to start doing this because, um, there are serious money that you can raise, but you need to start making this happen. You don't want it just to be inspired at the end. You want to load, you want to backload this. So this is where you start going to, to your key sponsors and the people that are your biggest fans. Yep. Let's say that you've got somebody, they just gave $50,000 and they're your key sponsor. Go back and ask them, say, you know what? We want to make a big impact. We appreciate you coming and doing this. And we're, we would like to see, we're going to do a fund to need. And we want to send a hundred kids to camp with a fund to need. We want to raise a hundred thousand dollars. How many of those would you be willing to come up with? I've seen myself where somebody said, I'll put an, I'll, we'll send another 25 kids to camp over and above everything they did. They donated another 25 grand. Mm-hmm. All those things come through people raising money doing that it gives a really time to do impact and this is where you go for your biggest fans okay the people that have given you the most money and the way that you can ask them is to say i know you know especially people that have a lot of money i know you could write a check for the whole thing i'm not asking you to do that but if you would be willing to make a significant gift that we could use to challenge the room to raise money and hit this need it um it really works. Uh, have not heard of that bid the cycle. Love to hear about it sometime. So love that. Anything else you want to hear? Hit us up afterwards. I got a yeah, draw um, winner. Do a winner, um, Jay. And then while you're doing that, Elaine, do me a favor. We'll either send you the link or what have you. But um, go ahead and go to hgafundraising.com if you don't mind. Click on the free coaching button, and you can schedule a, a coaching session with Jason where he can go over the vacation station, fund any any other questions you have. We can talk further about getting attention and stuff. Yeah, please do, Elaine. It's free to you. We're available as early as next Tuesday. So please reach out if you don't mind. Jay, we have a winner. We do. Barbara Fitzgerald. Hey, Barbara. Barbara Fitzgerald. Way to go, Barb. All right. Cool, Barbara. You want a trip that you can use in your next fundraiser to raise more money? Barbara, we might have to put that in the vacation station, if you know what I mean. There you go. Hey, hey, everybody. Thanks so much for being here. We really appreciate it. Any questions that you have, we're going to send out a link. Please share that with anybody else that you think could uh, benefit from this. And um, we'll hope to see you here next week. Thanks, everybody, for sharing. Thanks for the kind words. Jason, thank you, brother. Get it out of the park. It was amazing. We'll see everybody next Thursday. Have a great Thursday afternoon, everybody. Thanks, brother.